Hello, my name is Fan Boxiang. I'm a student at UC San Diego working on graphics, computer vision, and physical simulation. Today, I'm presenting our work, Sapien, a simulated part-based interactive environment. It is a collaborative effort at UC San Diego, Stanford University, Simon Fraser University, Google Research, and UC Los Angeles. I'd like to start the talk by looking at the intelligent agent. We all want to build some sort of intelligent agent, but what is intelligence? Well, it sounds like a very big topic, but it really boils down to two major aspects. The first is the ability to perceive information. So here we see the microwave and we recognize its parts and functionality. That is our ability to perceive. And the other aspect is the ability to adapt a behavior based on the perception and knowledge. So this is how we choose to act based on our understanding of the things. In computer vision, we have been primarily focusing on the perception problem. We developed algorithms to recognize objects and analyze the things. On the other hand, robotic control focuses on correctly executed planned actions and we are able to achieve quite high precision with the control methods. Now we have those two modules ready, why are we not seeing robots doing things everywhere? Well, there's actually a gap between these two lines of research. Say, we have a typical control algorithm. You would expect the ground truth physical properties and the geometries. Some of these properties can be estimated from vision but some can only be obtained through actively interacting with the objects. So how to generate action plans and how to actively perceive the world are some problems remaining to be solved. We have seen that the data-driven approaches have been hugely successful in computer vision. So can we apply the same method to interaction and manipulation research? One possible way to do it is to just let the robot do all these things in the real world and then we collect real world data. For example, we may use reinforcement learning to let the robot explore the world, or we may just control the robots manually to collect interaction data. This kind of data collection is doable and has been done, but it has its own problems. Say, using reinforcement learning to explore the world could easily damage the expensive robot hardware. And reinforcement learning usually has low efficiency and it also tends to overfit to specific agents and environments. So how about manually collecting the robot interaction data? Well, man manual control of the robot is actually not intuitive and humans may not be able to optimally control the robot. Also, the human operators need to be trained in order to operate the robots correctly. So collecting interaction data is actually much harder compared to collecting vision data. Since data collection in the real world is so hard, people turn to another direction that is using a simulated environment. In the simulation, we do not need to worry about damaging our hardware, and we can run multiple instances to increase the efficiency very easily. However, now we face another problem that is a seem to real gap. We want whatever learned in a simulated environment can be transferred to the real world relatively easily. For that purpose, we need to make the simulation match the real world closely. We need accurate physical simulation, real world like robotics integration, realistic rendering, and content for simulations such as objects and robot models. In our work, Sapien, we address these four aspects by introducing our engine renderer and assets. Let's start by looking at the Sapien engine, which handles the physics and robotics integration. Sapien engine is built on top of the PhysX physical simulator. We expose the articulation interface for robotics and the world interface for accessing everything in the simulated world. We integrate the robotics operation system, or ROS, supported in Sapien engine to support sensors, controllers, and high-level motion planning algorithms for the client-side use. With these features, Sapient Engine is able to support standard reinforcement learning settings and robotics tasks. Next, let's see how Sapient does the rendering. 
CPN renderer takes the raw information from CPN engine and generates images as sensor input. It supports multi-modality outputs, including RGB images, depth map, normal map, and part segmentation through GLSL shaders. And it also provides ray trace rendering with the optics framework. The ray trace rendering can support generating high quality demos, such as the standard stacking task shown here. The shaders in CPN Renderer can also be customized to suit special rendering needs. Next, let's see what simulation content CPN has to offer. We provide the ParNet Mobility Dataset, which is a further annotation of the ShapeNet and ParNet datasets to include more than 2,000 models and 14,000 movable parts. We have annotated the rotational axis and the translational axis for each movable part. And for each axis, we annotate the motion range. The annotation includes complex kinematic chains, such as the relation between the door handle and the door shaft here. And here's a demo of a part of the partner mobility dataset. In contrast to most existing environments, Partnet Mobility Dataset is designed with cross-instance generalization in mind. That is, objects in each category can have different appearances and motion parameters. It encourages the development of manipulation algorithms that generalize across object instances and avoid overfitting to specific settings. Apart from the Partnet Mobility Dataset, CPN also allows building robot models, new articulated objects, and object layouts through the standard URDF format. URDF stands for the Unified Robot Description Format. It is supported in most robot software and other simulated environments. In Sapien, we also support building robots and objects through a Python API. Combining the engine, renderer, and assets, here we have the whole architecture of Sapien. We demonstrate the usage of Sapien with the following tasks. Movable part segmentation, motion parameter estimation, part manipulation, and the long horizon planning tasks. These tasks are chosen since solving them all will take us one step closer to realizing home assistant robots. Here is a human demonstration for a long horizon task in Sapien. The robot needs to load the cart with buckets and then push the cart. Designing and studying such robotics tasks can be hard in the real world, but with Sapien, we hope to accelerate vision and robotics research by providing realistic simulated environment. Now, let me talk about our future plans and potential applications for Sapien. We like to release the benchmarks for the design tasks, including the vision tasks and some meaningful manipulation tasks. Sapien can also be used as an education platform for robotics learning and control. Now, Sapien is being tested under this use case. In this video, we are showing a benchmark-like environment used to evaluate the performance of control algorithms designed by student participants in an educational setting. In our past experience, most robotics courses are purely based on mathematical derivations, lacking hands-on experience. But courses involving real robots usually cannot give a full coverage of topics in robotics because real robots are costly and time-consuming to operate. Students also need extensive training in hardware. With Sapien, we teach robotics concepts with hands-on experience while not requiring the expensive setups in real-world experiments. To summarize, Sapien provides simulation and rendering for vision and manipulation it hosts a large-scale dataset of articulated objects. Sapien is also fully open source, and to start using Sapien, it is as simple as pip install Sapien. To learn more, you can visit our website. Here you can browse and download the assets and the code for Sapien. Alright, that's all I have about Sapien. Thanks for listening.